Are you interested in knowing whether a polyphasic schedule might actually be dangerous? In this video, we will be taking a look at how the sleep architecture changes when people adapt to a polyphasic schedule. We'll have a look at how the specific sleep stages are altered, and if you're on the edge of deciding to do a polyphasic schedule, perhaps this video could help you out. This video is part of the series answering the question, is polyphasic sleep dangerous? If you haven't seen the earlier parts in this series, I recommend checking them out now before continuing with this video, link in the description. First, we'll go over a bit of background. As we've previously covered, reducing SWS and RAM can lead to some negative consequences. SWS is the sleep stage where the glymphatic system is most active. Also, this is the stage where damaged cells are repaired. During SWS, also some memory consolidation happens. RAM sleep also plays an important role for memory consolidation, namely for spatial, emotional and procedural memory consolidations. Reducing these sleep stages are what lead to the feeling of sleep deprivation. In the short term, that's not a big problem. However, in the long term, this can lead to such negative effects such as a reduced immune function, obesity, possibly diabetes, as well as some other nasty things. The previous bit is what classifies these two as vital sleep stages. Not getting sufficient of them can in the long term lead to some serious health problems. This is also supported by the fact that if you miss out on SWS and or REM, the body will try to catch up on any missed sleep in those stages during a next sleep, whereas it doesn't do so at all during light sleep. Alright, so we've established that cutting out SWS and REM can lead to some nasty consequences. So what's going on with polyphasic sleep? We've been working on a pretty big project that's called the EEG labeling project. The idea here is that community members who are interested in tracking their sleep continue to track their sleep from before they started at an adaptation until they are done adapting. This way they can track their adaptation progress while it's happening and in the end we can consolidate this data to hopefully figure out exactly what's going on during a polyphasic adaptation. The project is still ongoing, but we've already got some very interesting readings that I can share with you today. Take a look at this picture. This is an EEG reading from Crimson when he just started attempting the Everyman 1 schedule. After he had adapted to the schedule, this is one of the readings he got. As you can see here, the amount of SWS that he had stayed relatively consistent, but the duration of REM sleep increased significantly at the expense of light sleep. This also matches his monophasic sleep need, so he was able to get all the REM and SWS he needs within the schedule. Another good hypnogram we can take a look at is from our member Feili. First I want to tell you that before he started his schedule, his sleep need were about 90 minutes of REM and about 130 minutes of SWS. This is way above average, which is one of the reasons why it's nice to have an EEG sometimes. Now, you can see that when he started his schedule, he clearly got less REM sleep than he needed. However, after adapting, you can see that the amount of REM has increased to almost match his sleep need, except that there's also two naps. The first of which is one like this. This is a picture of a morning nap of his, which is absolutely filled with REM. Then, how do we expect this project to continue in the future? We'll continue to gather any data we can get our hands on to determine whether this repartitioning happens only for few people or for pretty much everyone. At this time, it looks like it can happen for most people. However, let's not draw any conclusions ahead of time. As you may know from watching our other videos, we like to do it the scientific way whenever possible. If you have any EEG readings from before, during and after attempting a polyphasic schedule that you would be willing to share with us, hit us up over on the Discord, even if your readings show different amounts. That way we can further our understanding of sleep and polyphasic sleep especially. In the next video in this series, Crimson is going to talk about the importance of light sleep. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. Stay tuned and sleep well.